Previously on Starting Over, Josie struggled to cope with the loss of her grandmother who raised her. That's my grandma. That's where I can go to talk to her. I still need her. I still need her opinion. And Rhonda fears that Josie idealizes her grandmother's love, which prevents her from allowing others into her life. I put so much effort into everybody being like that. Rhonda's also been concerned about Summer's health. Patients die from gastric bypass surgery because they haven't taken care of themselves. Summer has undergone a dangerous surgery. She has to face her food issues, she has to exercise, and she has to eat well. It's not like cheating on a diet. To Wanda was assigned to write her autobiography so she could find out what was holding her back. Somewhere in there, to Wanda, you learned that it wasn't okay for you to be who you are. I, I don't know where that is. But we gonna hunt it down and find it. And Kim couldn't move past the pain her broken relationships have caused. I have many. Pick one. My sister's probably the most. Okay. We've been estranged for about five years. Define estranged. What does that mean? We can't even be in the same room together. excited about seeing my husband and I need to be refreshed <laughs> so I'm taking my braids out and getting them put back in. Today is a very special day for me because it, it is my grandma's birthday. She's not here anymore and I'm so not wanting to drag all the mistakes that I've made with my grandmother and myself out today at all. Hello. Tawanda is going to submit the first chapter of her autobiography. Title chapter is A Star is Born. I want you to perform it. Okay. September 18th, 1973. Michael Braxton Sr. and Evelyn Braxton gave birth to their new baby girl, Tawanda Chloe Braxton, named by my brother because he wanted a dog instead of a new baby sister. <laughs> <laughs> Tawanda interviewed both of her parents very extensively to discover some insights about her entrance into the world. I think there's a lot of information in there that Tawanda can use in her current experience. I am the fourth child born with two other sisters and a brother. All of the girls' names starting with a T my daddy always says that when you put all the T's together, you get... <laughs> <laughs> a baby girl was not on their agenda. Mm. My parents were hoping for a baby boy. Mommy had a difficult time with carrying me during her pregnancy. I was a whopping eight pounds when I was born, and I was almost the cause of her bleeding to death. Mommy remembers a doctor saying to her that it didn't look good and she may end up being a diabetic because of the pregnancy. I almost get the indication that my father was somewhat embarrassed of having so many children. Mm. He was the only one employed at the time of my birth and he had six mouths to feed. Six weeks after my birth, Mommy found out she was expecting yet once again. <laughs> good gracious. Mm -hmm. I don't have time to be the baby or to get the full attention that every one of my siblings experienced. How dare she forget me? Hello? Remember me? <laughs> I believe that is when I became angry, mm. pissed off, <laughs> and mean. Mm. Out here. I'm meeting with Kim today to discuss her problems with anxiety. In our last session, you told me at the end, you said, I'm experiencing a great deal of anxiety. Yes. And so I said, let's talk and see what I can do to help you with that, right? Yeah. It's not going to do me any good to hide things, which is my usual pattern. I'm here to help myself. Dr. Stan is here to help me. 
and I've decided to accept his help. All right, so first a quick history. Either one of your parents have any kind of anxiety? My mom. When you were a child, she had anxiety? Mm -hmm. What would you see your mother experience? Well, she had cancer, mm. and then my dad left. Did your father leave your mother while she was sick with cancer? Yes. I don't think I knew that. No, probably not. I don't think I mentioned it. Did, have you mentioned anybody here? No. no. Kim deals with her anxiety on her own. She doesn't really ask for help, and she's been suffering in silence for a long time. Isn't it it's really frightening to have someone who you think should be taking care of you yeah. somewhat falling apart? Yes, exactly, and she was. Did you feel need to take care of her? Yes, yes. And my sister and my brother. Everybody? Everybody in my teens. I think I had, you know, an anxiety attack, like a panic attack, where your heart starts beating really fast and you feel sick to your stomach, you know, you start shaking, and then you think maybe you're having a heart attack and... Mm -hmm. Right, you just described all the classic symptoms of panic attacks. Oh, yeah. So did you continue to have panic attacks? Mm -hmm. I think I've had them, you know, since then, all my life. How often would you have them, Kim? <sighs> Well, here, uh, almost every day. An actual panic attack? Yes, almost every day. It's been bad here. Kim's anxiety has been intensified by her stay in the house. Not only does she have to deal with the new relationships, it's created a lot of turmoil inside. Have you heard of hysterical conversion? Yes. Well, supposedly I had that. Hysterical conversion has to do with a psychological cause of a biological problem. Right before I went to college, I was diagnosed with what's called hysterical conversion, and my right leg went numb. I was taken to the doctor, and that's what they told me I had. My parents put me in a, kind of like an institution. Well, probably a psychiatric hospital. Yeah. Because, because, of, the, because of that or because of a number of things going on? No, because of that. No. Uh, I wouldn't I was be young. convinced it was hysterical conversion. Right. I mean, that's what they, they call it. You know, if, if they couldn't find a biological reason for it, that's what they may have diagnosed it as. Yeah, so then I thought, well, I'm hysterical, I guess. So that's why I have panic attacks. And I mean, that's what I drew in, within my own mind. Right. You labeled yourself. Yeah. And then you decide to live up to the label. I guess so. It's interesting to me that you labeled yourself probably more than just hysterical. I don't know what else you labeled yourself crazy. after being yeah. after being in the hospital. Yes, it was horrible. You still think you're crazy? Um, I'm so miserable, and I want to be able to put my feelings first. I'm not really sure Tawanda really feels it, so I'm going to take her to the next level. still think you're crazy? Yeah, I probably would think. I mean, if, if we're going to be honest, I guess in my deep, darkest secrets of my soul, I would probably think that. Yeah. Okay. You're not crazy. I want to tell you that. <laughs> and, and I want to tell you that you have some issues, some problems that many people have. Craziness is for people who can't tell the difference between reality and fantasy. Right. And I can't. Yeah. The first thing I'm doing with Kim is to teach her that what she's experiencing is not abnormal. I'm trying to help her understand that she's not crazy. Everybody needs some anxiety to function. It, mm -hmm. it allows you to function, do the work you have to do with life. It's yeah. okay to be anxious about those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And I want you to understand something else. There were many people 20, 30 years ago who were put into psychiatric hospitals because they were incorrigible, because behavior problems, and they weren't people who belonged there. And often people that got labels have stuck with them the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. You're not crazy, okay? okay? Hi. Hey, Andy. How are you doing? Oh, I'm good. Marcus is gonna go to the grocery store with me tomorrow and pick out stuff. I don't know where you're going. I'm assuming Trader Joe's. I can mention they have um, prepared salads. And it typically comes down to the dressing. Salads aren't really fattening. It's the dressing, so. Yeah. I'm still trying to finish off all the crap that I bought. I'm giving away what I can, too, but. I'm like, I'd just like for you to give it away. Oh, I've tried it, but, and I just, I, I just can't. 
completely get rid of it all because I'm like, that, that was so much money. <laughs> I yearn and long to be able to be the baby, to have the rightful attention I deserve. Why not? Whatever happened to the beautiful baby girl that was not planned and that was too big for you? Am I really a problem? Hmm. This is a reminder of me not mattering to anyone, especially to the person that I want the most attention from, mommy. Hmm. I felt that I never mattered as well as my feelings and opinions. Hmm. I have been forgotten in the family circle. I can no longer live in this fantasy world that I have created of being okay. I am so miserable, and I want to be able to put my feelings first. I have tried to place myself in my mother's shoes by seeing things through her eyes, and I know it has to be difficult to be split six different ways amongst her children. And knowing my father had an extramarital affair and not showing mommy the attention, I felt it was my duty to make sure she felt loved and wanted and had a purpose. I also felt that I could fix it and make it all better by not adding my feelings to the pot of blame. So I kept them in once more. That is not the way I want to be anymore. I want to be able to share love and receive it. I want to know who I can be with releasing all of these emotions. I want to discover my true self. Wow. There's a lot of information in this chapter. I'm not really sure Tawanda really feels it, so I'm gonna take her to the next level. She'll sing about it. Today is my grandma's second birthday since she passed, and I miss her dearly. She's the woman who raised me, so her birthday means a great deal to me. And it's just so hard for me not to be able to show and share to her how much she means to me and how much I loved having her in my life. Okay, stand up. Okay. I want you to sing me a song. Here's your words. I want to be seen. I want to be heard. I deserve love. I want your attention. Find the melody. Find the hook. Let's go. Okay. Those are the only words? Well, you can add more if you want to. I want some attention and I want to be heard. Sing it from here. Okay. Sing it from here. Okay. Not from here. Okay. Sing it from here. Okay. Come on. Star's born. Let's okay. go. Sing it out. Okay. I want to be seen and I want to be heard. I want some yes. attention and I want some love, love, love. I want to be seen. Come on, from I want to be earned. I want some attention and I want love. Ooh, yeah. You deserve it to be seen, to be heard, to be loved. And somehow, we want to let that little baby Tawanda in there know that she's not a problem or a burden, and that she really didn't hurt anybody. Now, Andre's coming tomorrow. Any reservations, hesitations no. about mm -mm. that? Because we talked the other day mm -hmm. about the fact that Andre married who you're not. Mm -hmm. Is there any support you think you need or he may need so that he becomes a part of this transition because the transition is happening. Mm -hmm. How we can support him so that this doesn't frighten him because I think that your change, your transformation is going to be so radical. I want to make sure that he's on board, mm -hmm. on deck. His wife changing can frighten him. I am nervous. I am not sure what is coming next. I want to give you fair uh, warning, Kim, that your next step is going to be very intense. Oh, God. Are you kidding? Uh, no. <laughs> Tell me what you heard me say. Don't repeat the words. Tell that me what it's you... going to be really hard. 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 I said intense. You heard hard. There's a discovery that you filter what you hear. 
What would you like to have happen? The next few weeks are going to be... Uh, easy. Easy, good. <laughs> the next few weeks are going to be... Interesting. Interesting, good. The next few weeks are going to be... Fun? Fun, yes, yes, that's good. That's all part of Joyful Living, great. <laughs> Just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using Heavy Rocks and Books to represent the emotional baggage Kim is carrying around from her many broken relationships. But I'm also trying to comment on her attachment to her precious stuff, like her Louis Vuitton bag. You know, sometimes, I don't know, I just get a little nervous. About Yana. me, okay. <laughs> just so a little nervous. You show up here in the starting over house with a goal, yeah. and that goal is what? Mend, Mend broken, broken relationships. relationships. But those relationships already have a character and experiences. What they did to you, what you did to them. Who are we talking about here? Your sister? Yeah. Stepmother. Stepchildren. Stepchildren. Let's just put the whole kitten caboodle in. All right. What do we have here? A big sack of rocks. We've got a whopping nine pounds. Nine pounds. The first thing that I'm putting on the scale is Kim's relationship baggage. The baggage she brought into the starting over house with her. So you're going to leave here with a lot of information mm -hmm. that your friends and family don't have. Right. Don't you think that gives you a greater responsibility than that? The best students. Get the hardest to hit. I'm because listening. What, yeah. you, what do you want to say? Come on, <laughs> ask the question. Come on, come on, ask me. Why does it always have to be me? Why not, Kim? <laughs> Where did you learn? I don't know. When you give, you should somehow get the quid pro quo. Have any ailments in your heart? Oh, no, no. That's How's your not. kidneys? They're good. How's your lungs? Everything's good. Liver, eyes, teeth. What if everything you give other people keeps your lungs off a respirator? Come on. What do you mean you don't get? What you get is another opportunity to give. <laughs> I didn't look at it like that. Come stand over here. There she is. Yes. I don't even know if this will fit you. It's probably too big. We are going to the beach today. I have no idea what is in store for today, but all they know is that today is going to be very hard for me. That is so cute. You are so cute. I want a one piece that looks like that. When was the last time you told your sister the truth? Five years ago. OK. Is that being a good friend? Is it? Is it? Kim is always looking at what others don't do in their relationships with her. Well, this is an opportunity for her to recognize what she doesn't do. In your relationship with your stepmom, when was the last time you exhibited some level of responsibility? Uh, just uh, recently at Ch uh, Snowden's graduation in July, I invited her to her graduation. I offered and she came and they stayed at my house and how did you treat her <laughs> now come on Iana, you're gonna give me one and how long you was know, she okay. gone before you gossiped about her and told your mother your girlfriend somebody how horrible she was how long had she been gone <laughs> i don't think she left yet. okay all righty then book in back <laughs> this is you're gonna make me haul these around aren't you when was the last time you had a compassionate, loving thought about oh, your sister? When did I? The with last her? time. Book and bag, book and bag. I, I, I couldn't even say I loved her last night. Do you love your sister? I mean, I love her because she's my sister, but it would be hard for me to write that. It seems like Iyanla is telling me that I need to have unconditional love for everybody. I want you to just take a look down here, Miss Kim. We can't even see the, the weight here. Why don't you get on and pick the bag up? <laughs> Can you see how much it weighs? Uh, 219 pounds. 19 pounds. Oh. oh. Even though you don't talk to them? You are still carrying the weight. How'd you like to carry this around all day? How would you like to do I that? I don't think I could. Well, Physically. Obviously, you have been, because it's in your heart, Kim. 
What I want Kim to understand is that even though she hasn't been carrying the physical weight of her broken relationship, she has been carrying the mental and emotional weight of it. Carrying that much grief, hurt, yeah. pain, anger, betrayal, carrying that around. Yeah. That's what stands between you and your joy. amaze me because you've lost your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, and your daughter. Is that right? But you don't say why me, do you? Why me? Why not me? Would you like to recommend somebody? I know where my daughter is, and yes. I was with her from the day she was born till the day she left her body. I, I, I wrapped her in her first receiving blanket and I zipped the body bag when they took her out of her house. What a blessing. What a divine opportunity. That's how I see it. And you have a divine opportunity to educate beginning in your family because your healing will be your sister's healing. probably isn't the best choice, but I'm hungry, and I'm not gonna watch everyone else eat and me sit there and starve. Summer is supposed to be eating healthy, and she is the one who had the gastric bypass surgery and wants to make herself look better and feel better, so I would just think that she would put more effort into it than she does. I shouldn't have done that. Wait till it all hits my stomach. Let's see how sick I get. I realized the cheeseburger is not the best choice. And I'm definitely going to the beach with a negative attitude. And I hate the idea of getting in a swimsuit and getting in the ocean. I'm not going in. Mm. I threatened my grandpa's life. Why would you do that? I told him if he ever hit me again and touched me that I'd slit his throat. women to join me at the beach. I have a special assignment for them. Josie? Yeah. Is it today your grandmother's birthday? It is my grandma's birthday. Today is? Yes. Happy birthday to her. Thank you. Are you okay? No. I'll be praying for you all day. Thank you. I'm not sure what we're doing at Topanga Beach, but I know that it has something to do with my grandma's birthday. It's time for the beach! I love it. Do you want us to sit? Sure, have a seat. <sighs> Welcome to the beach, ladies. Are you glad to be here? How you feel? What does oh, it feel? I love the ocean. You love I'm the so ocean? I'm so excited. It smells so good. It calms good. me. It smells it good. I love it. Relaxes. It relaxes. What about you, Summer? Do you like the beach? No. No. I live in Texas, right. are you kidding? It literally freezes me, the idea of getting in a swimsuit. And I realize that maybe nobody's looking, but I'm not ready to put myself on display. Well, ladies, we're gonna have a very nice day at the beach, I hope, in spite of some of your feelings. So what I'd first like to do is ask Josie to stay, and the rest of you, if somebody could be in charge of Chloe, Go have a good time for like a half hour and 45 minutes and take your toys and go have a great time. Okay. Enjoy yourselves. Check it out. Oh, oh, my gray good. squirrel. I need to stay up at the table and I'm not too willing to find out what's going to happen. Okay, Josie. So what I'd like to do is to do a little exercise with you. Okay. Does this person look familiar? Yes, that's me. That's you. What I'd like to do is I'd like you to have a seat. Okay. Because we're going to be doing some work together. What I want you to do is share with me your mistakes and then put it on the board because let's get them out on the table so that we can start getting past our mistakes. Mm. What do you think of that? I know my mistakes, but it's a little scary to tell them. Well, the reason I brought this exercise up today is because the other day when we were talking, you mentioned about how much 
you beat yourself up and how many mistakes you made in relation to your grandma and grandpa. And if you want to honor her and honor him, it's her birthday. There's no better day than to say, all right, am I done hanging on to my mistakes so that I actually can be the woman, the girl that my grandma saw? What mistakes roll around in her mind? What does she beat herself up about? I want to know, and I want to eliminate them. Mistakes. Get them all out. Come on, put it out there. If you're willing. What else about your grandmother? I did drugs at a young age and hurt Gma, grandma. I gave up on my grandpa. I threatened my grandpa's life. Well, how'd you do that? I told him if he ever hit me again and touched me that I'd slit his throat. That's one of the words I said because I was so mad. Felt no love. Mm. People judge, and when you tell people your mistakes, they tend to think less of you. And it's really scary for me to actually have to write them down and put them actually on my picture for everyone to see. What other mistakes did you make with Grandma and Grandpa? This is the day that we're gonna fix them. This is the day we're gonna let them go. This is the day we're gonna say, okay, no more. So really, Josie, I want you to dig deep. Did you pick Jonathan over Grandma? This one really sucks. Josie's going through various emotions. She's frustrated, she's angry, she's crying. It's just tough. It's tough to admit these things. concerned at all about my husband seeing me and seeing my new changes. However, I'm extremely anxious to see him and to kiss him and to hug him really tight. I don't really want to be here. Oh, Thank you. They're not going to get me anywhere near a beach in a bathing suit. It's ridiculous to think it's going to even happen. doesn't really leave much room for me to see me. That's right. Mistakes kind of cover you up, don't they? Yeah. What if you're not your mistakes? I don't get that. All right, go get your housemates, and let's go. Let's talk about this. It's time for the other women to join Josie in this exercise. I want them to all realize that mistakes do not have to dictate their future. know my story but that doesn't tell everyone exactly some of the mistakes I've made that have led to me being in the starting over house I'm sorry I don't mean to Gee, take you away help. from the beach it's really scary to think that when my housemates are coming up to the table with me that they're going to have to look at the mistakes I've made ladies realize that their mistakes do not create who they are does not have to decide their decisions for them they identify too closely with their mistakes I'm hoping this exercise will help ladies Josie and I've been doing some work about mistakes and I didn't know if any of you ever made mistakes oh you, you do oh, yeah. okay oh, yes. give me a mistake that you keep reliving over and over and over and over again boy you guys don't have a mistake at the tip of your tongue don't look at mine. Me? Yeah. Okay, sorry. It just feels like you are. Josie does not want the other women to look at her poster and all her mistakes. She wants to keep it private. But that's not going to happen. Sorry. <laughs> I was just trying to make you feel bad. If my parents hadn't gotten divorced and if I hadn't gotten divorced, then only everything would be different. Okay. If only I could let myself love other people. Summer. If only I could have spent more time. Only I could be honest and tell a person exactly how I feel. I wouldn't hurt so much. If only I could uh, speak my mind. 
If I hadn't been born at all, none of these things would have happened to all the people that cared about me. Anybody ever have a sense that they wish they'd never been born? Anybody ever say that to themselves? Yes. I know I have. Mm -hmm. Twanda, but you yeah. said it. Sine? Great. Take the lids off, ladies. I actually thought it might be pudding, which is kind of a little bit more exciting, but it's paint. One of the ways to heal our mistakes and the one of the ways to move through our mistakes is to actually acknowledge them. And Josie and I have been going through some of her mistakes, okay? And I want to do the same with you. So ladies, if you wish that you've never been born, I'd like you to take some paint and splat it on yourself. Anybody ever use sex for love? Splat yourself. Anybody ever feel like an outcast in their family? Put it on top, Summer, I wanna see it. I'm not going that far in to wash it off, so no. I'm still going through the motions of painting myself, but I am not open to learning from them because I'm so focused on freaking out about the fact that I know Rhonda's gonna try to make us go into the ocean and wash all this paint off. I'm letting one issue stop me from getting over another one, but I can't control it. How many people have ever been fake? Add some to the back of my arm, please. <laughs> Here. I'm okay. running out of spots. <laughs> Help each other. If the other person wants them on their back, excellent. Josie, I want you to notice how everybody's painting themselves with your mistakes. How many people ever hated somebody in their family? How many people think somewhere inside of them there really is a bad person? How many people would not listen to their loved one's advice? There is not enough pain. How many people have threatened somebody else's life and really just wanted to kill them? <laughs> There's not, not enough pain. Y'all better not enough pain. Not enough pain. Not enough pain. Not enough pain. All right, ladies, I've got really good news for you. You are not your mistakes. Your mistakes are things that you have just claimed and put upon yourselves just like this paint. Do you want to keep walking around with this paint? No. no. Do you want to keep saying, I am my mistakes? This is me. I am my mistakes. No. 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 Great. So are you willing to let go of your mistakes in order to honor yourselves? Yes. I'm willing to honor myself. Kim? Me too. Let's go. Let's go. I'm asking the ladies of the Starting Over House to get in the water. Get in that ocean, and let's wash away those mistakes. Let's make you clean, let's make you pure, just as you are. Freedom is possible. Let's find it today. We all decide to hold hands and go in the ocean together. Unfortunately, Summer doesn't want to participate. Of course I wish I was out there, but I have not done so many things because of my body image problem. It's always been a problem. I've let it rule so much of my life. I just think I'm realistic about what I look like and nobody needs to see that, including me. You have the power to scrub yourselves clean, to show your true self. Take off your shirts and start scrubbing. It is kind of nice to have a clean slate, especially with my goal of mending broken relationships. Maybe this will free me up so that I can feel free to move forward. I'm literally washing away the painted mistakes in my old story, and I'm feeling so refreshed in knowing that I'll be able to tell my new story and share it with my husband. wiping each other clean, we're taking our shirts off, rubbing ourselves, scrubbing the paint off, and we're having fun. And it's good to know we cannot let our mistakes run our lives. I brought a little food for us to have a little noshing, to celebrate because really every time that you let something go, it's a time to celebrate and honor who you really are. Let's go around and find out what you gain from this exercise. I never realized that all of us had a lot of the same mistakes. I thought I was the only one with those issues. Yeah. Kim, what are you going to take away? I did wear my mistakes on me. And it made me judgmental and closed off and, you know, not able to move through the world with people. So I feel like, you know, if I can forgive myself, then maybe I can let other people in and forgive others. Yeah. 
I can feel proud of myself because I've made a lot of mistakes, but I've learned from them. And it feels good to let go of them. And I feel proud of myself for not having all these things that I think make up me when they don't. Yes, yes. In her eyes, Josie had made mistakes with her grandmother. Her next step, to rid herself of the guilt. have gone home, but Rhonda and I are going to stay back and talk about my grandma. Oh, okay. So, that's a picture of you and your grandma. Yes. And she's been gone for a year. Let's put that picture down. So, I want you to find ways to support yourself and honor her, as well as grow from her love, and maybe let her go a little bit, too. Think of this as your love jar. What I'd like you to do is I want you to take a scoop, okay? And everything you've learned from your grandmother, every gift she gave you, I want you to scoop sand in. So one gift, one scoop of sand, okay? Do you think you can do that? Okay. So I want you to say it out loud so I know what it okay. is. My grandma gave me the gift of being fair. Mm. She gave me a home. She gave me the gift of home, by having a home, knowing where my place is. Unconditional love. She taught me it was okay to be a girl. Did she give you safety or yes. security oh my or protection? She was my protector. Sa protector, what yes. else? Yes, and she was my safety. And what about security? And lots of security. And what I about so provider? What about her. provider? She's a good provider. Yeah? Did she she taught me to provide? for myself and for others. What else? Don't always have to be the receiver. You can be a giver. So she taught me to give. Good. How much love did she give you? Oh my gosh. There isn't enough sand in the world to fill the jar up for that one. She was my grandma. And even though she died, she still is my grandma. That's my hair a day before my husband is arriving and it's because I am wanting to look so beautiful when he comes because I hadn't seen him in so long what are you doing? well I'm making roses for who? Josie oh that's nice Josie's grandmother grew roses and I'm thinking that making some paper roses might let her feel a lot more love than maybe she would otherwise be feeling today. The other day you told me that you weren't willing to share your love. Is that okay with you then? That you're only loved by one person? No. So why are you hanging on so tight? Because I love her. She loved me so much. No. Josie's final mistake to wash away today is to stop clinging to her grandmother, who is no longer around to nourish her. Now she can hold on to the love, but she's got to learn to open her heart and let new love in. And so basically, your loyalty to your grandma, which is honorable, but is also keeping all the other love out, even Chloe. What would your grandma say to you right now? She would want me to share that with everyone. So really the question is, is do you want to keep being the scared Josie who doesn't have any love in her life and wants to keep the lid on the only love she's ever known? Or do you want to grow from that love and do you want to multiply? <laughs> it's not about letting her go and not loving her. It's about keeping the love but letting the attachment go so you can let more love in and out and flow, just like the ocean. 
It's time to show Josie that love renews itself, that there's enough love to go around, that the love she learned from her grandmother can multiply and expand, and she can have more love than she ever imagined if she just lets it go. You want to say anything? I love you so much, Grandma, and I'm not forgetting you ever. But it's okay. It's okay. It feels really good to know that I'm going to even be able to love Chloe more because I've let go of so much pain that I've held inside for my grandma. I'm so scared that I could lose my grandma. And I don't want her to go anywhere. But I know that my love for her will never change. And the way I feel about her will never go away. It'll never die. Next week on Starting Over. It's either this way or it's this way. And that's it. A friendship is tested. I'm not having an attitude with you, Jennifer. I don't want to be here. I'd like to go home. Tawanda is reunited with her husband. Hey, honey. But a startling revelation could end the joyful visit. So are you saying to me that one day you know your marriage is going to end? Eventually. Summer is pushed out of her comfort zone. I don't want to be this way, but I don't know how to change. Josie struggles to stay on track. You might as well just pack your bags and go back to Sullivan right now. And her actions could be her downfall. Should Miss Josie stay or go? I don't think you should be here. I think you should go.